When you're building your workshop, tool selection is probably the most important decision that you'll make. Should you go big, should you go small, should you go mobile, or should you go stationary? These are important factors to consider whenever you're picking out your essential tools like the table saw, jointer, and planer. I've had a separate jointer and planer set up since I've moved into this garage. And with those bigger projects, it's definitely getting a lot harder to move around in the space and it's becoming not very efficient to work in the garage. And the thought came up to me to go ahead and just sell the planer and jointer to get a combo machine. So I posted the planer and jointer online and the planer was gone within like maybe a week or so. When I saw the planer, I kind of felt like I made the wrong decision. And that's the reason why I'm making this video here today. And after giving it a bit more thought, I decided to still stick with the dedicated planer and jointer setup, which is why I'm thankful that the jointer didn't sell because I would have lost a lot of money. <laughs> Before we get into this machine, I wanted to talk about why I decided to stick with the dedicated jointer and planer setup. Being a full-time woodworker, productivity and workflow is so important when it comes to batching out a lot of the products that I have for Etsy. And since that is a big source of revenue for the business, I wanted to make sure that I'm not spending so much time fiddling with the machine. I know that there are a lot of you guys who do have combo machines and it doesn't take that much time to change it from a jointer to a planer. I'm just not that type of person who likes to fiddle with the machine. I want it to be set ready for me to go. And again, it goes back to the efficiency. It goes back to the productivity. Just the thought of doing all the milling and then realizing you don't have enough boards, switching the machines back to the jointer, then going back to the planer. If I'm working on a project, I want it to be set up, batch out all the stuff that I need to. And if I need to come back, it's already there for me to uh, mill up additional boards if I need to. And I know the combo machines now, they're built really well and you probably don't have to deal with any accuracy issues. But I think the long-term effects of constantly moving it back and forth between the planter and jointer, I just feel like it's bound to get out of square, out of whack or whatever. Of course, with a dedicated setup, you definitely still have to calibrate things. But with this jointer here, I set it up initially when I first got it and it's been dead on ever since. All I have to do is really just worry about the fence. And with the planer, once it's all set up, I don't really have to do much with it. With less moving parts, I'm not too worried about the machine not performing as it should. You're probably thinking a combo machine definitely makes a lot of sense for my space. And I don't disagree with you. I think if I did go with a combo machine, I would have saved a ton of space. But for me, I had to think long-term in terms of space. If you're in a two-car garage, a 12-inch jointer and a 15-inch planer is gonna take up a lot of space. And that's what I have been dealing with for the past uh, three or four years in this place. So that was why I considered going with a combo machine. Doing that, I would be able to work more efficiently. I would be able to move around and work on these bigger projects. Currently, we're in the process of building a new shop and that shop is going to give me ample amount of room to work and a space where I can have the two machines set up. So I'm going to just suck it up for the next couple of months as the other shop is getting built. Just the upside of having the dedicated machine, it just makes so much more sense for my business long-term. And as the business grows, I want to bring in more people to work for me and having a dedicated setup definitely makes sense. Imagine if I did get the combo machine, if one person needs to work on the jointer, but then there's somebody already working on the planer, well, you're slowing down production at that time. So now let's talk about this machine right here. So this is the replacement. This is the Laguna PX16. It is a 16 inch capacity planer and it is really nice. I've been using this machine for about three months now and because of this holiday rush, I probably put at least a thousand board foot of walnut and white oak through it. So <laughs> I definitely put it to the test. But before we get into the actual review, I wanted to do some full disclosures on this machine right here. Yes, I did buy this machine and I actually reached out to Laguna to see if they had any promotions going on because it's a very expensive machine and I'll take any discounts that I can get. <laughs> they offered a bigger discount than I imagined in exchange for this review. I've done one initial review and a long-term review on their 14BX bandsaw. If you wanna check those out, link in the description down below. So I'm familiar with their brand and overall, I definitely love their stuff. Right off the bat, Laguna makes some of the nicest looking tool, in my opinion, on the market. I love the color, I think it looks really good. It's very simple, very 
very clean. That's what I like. I like all the buttons in one location. I have this, the emergency stop button, the on and off, and then the digital readout here. And then of course you have the bed height adjustment right off the side right here. This comes with a five horsepower motor with the spiral head cutter. If you guys are going to buy a planer, definitely recommend the spiral head upgrade. It's, it's a world of a difference. Once you go from straight knives to spiral head, you can't really compare the two. Even though my previous planer did have a spiral head, this one is much quieter. But with the bigger motor, I did have to make some upgrade to my outlet box, which is somewhere back there. Um, previously, the amperage for my old machine was 20 amps. This one here, they recommend a 30 amp uh, circuit. With my entire shop, I ran 10 gauge wire for everything because I knew that if I did ever upgrade equipment, most of the time I'm looking at a 30 amp breaker for these larger machines. So I went ahead and just ran the 10 gauge wire throughout. So it was no issue upgrading to this motor here. All I had to do was change out my breaker, change out the outlet. And just so you know, they don't include the wire for your plug. You have to go out and buy it yourself. It's not a big issue. It did cost like $30 for like this 10 foot run that I have here. Um, but I did wish that it came with the machine. Because I'm producing a lot of products for the store, each product has to be pretty much the same. And this is why I love that they included a digital readout. Since it's internal, I don't have to worry about any brackets or anything that's attached to the machine that could get out of calibration. Once I calibrate this machine, it's very simple. The process is you make sure you have a flat board. So take it over to the jointer, make sure you have one side flat and then send it through the planer. Make sure the opposite side is coplanar and it's parallel with your reference side. Then you're gonna take a measurement on a digital caliper. Make sure you have a good digital caliper that is accurate. And you're just gonna take the number on the caliper and set it on your readout here. That's pretty much it. You can raise the bed a little bit, take another pass just to verify, but it's very simple to calibrate this machine here. That's what I love about it. And so far after three months of use, it's still been dead on. I can send the board through and I know that if I set this to 0.75 inches, then I know I'm gonna get exactly 0.75 on the other side. So definitely good that it has a readout built in. And probably the biggest question you guys have is, does it produce night? And the answer is, Yes, it still produces snipe. It's honestly, you can't even tell. If you move your hand across it, there's no real dip. However, it's not a big concern because inside this box, you can actually adjust the rollers to make sure that it's all good and you don't get that snipe. And usually how I work in the shop is I make the boards longer anyways, so the snipe doesn't really matter. I can just cut it out or I can just simply sand it because that's all you really need to get rid of that snipe. And again, it's way better than the machine that I had previously, so it's not, too big of a concern for me. Since space is currently one of the issues in the shop, I love the design of this roller here. You can do that and save a whole bunch of space. Well, not a whole bunch, but it doesn't take much room. With the previous one, the planar beds would pretty much be stationary. You can't really do anything about that. Um, it would be another 12 inches over here and then 12 inches on the other side. So with those wings, it does take up some space whenever I'm trying to move around. Having the ability to pull this out whenever I need and then collapse it in whenever it's not in use. For me, this was definitely a big selling point for my shop here. So Laguna does make a 20 inch version of this planer here, it's the PX20. And you might ask, why did I not go with the 20 if later on space is not an issue? I've never really gone over that 13 to 14 mark. Even with a 15, it was already good enough. I was going to go with a 15 if they did have it, but they didn't. So going with a 20 inch would be a bit of an overkill for the shop. And it couldn't, I couldn't justify the price as well. Now there are times where I may do a 16 inch glue up um, on very rare occasions. So the money that I would have spent on a 20 inch, I'm going to take that and eventually later upgrade the jointer to a 16 inch. That way I have a 16 inch jointer and now a 16 inch planer. So that was a good, now here's a bad. And when I say bad, it's honestly not that big of a deal. That has to do with the dust collection shroud right here. I don't like how it's designed. I don't like how it's shooting off to the side here, which 
in some arrangements in some of our shops, it may not make sense because if the dust port is pointing out this way and you have a pipe coming in this side, it just makes a weird transition. I feel like if it was straight and maybe angled up a little bit, I think that would have been a better design for the shroud right here. And also in this back corner here, the chips, it just gets bundled up. I can see right now there's some chips just in this back corner here. And it could be that my system is getting a little full, so I gotta empty it. But once it's there, it's really hard for anything to move it out of that corner. So I feel like there's like a little bit of a dead space back here. And also the way that the shroud is connected, it's connected from these four bolts here. There's two on the top and then two on the bottom here. And because of that, I can't open up this uh, top panel to access the blade if I never need to do maintenance without taking out the shroud. So I had to take out the shroud before I can even open up this top panel here. I think there could have been a different solution where maybe this thing just simply clips on through some type of clip like they have here and it could just easily be, be detached without having to pull out, you know, um, a screwdriver or something to remove those bolts. But overall, this collection is perfectly fine. It's just those small little things that I felt like it could have been a little bit better. So if you're on the fence about a combo machine or a dedicated setup, hopefully this video has given you some clarity in that decision making. Ultimately, it's going to be up to you and your workflow. I think this setup for my shop and my workflow works best. Until next time, guys, this is Bow Design Craft Workshop. See ya.